presence is so good. A lot of times people are like, man, I don't feel no presence. Well, that's the problem. You're trying to feel something. It's already there. It takes faith. You got to rely. You got to trust. You got to expect. I'm expecting good things this morning. I mean, God's already working. He's already imparting. He's already doing things. Y'all could come over here in the middle. Y'all come on over here in the middle. Yeah, come on. Get in the middle. Yeah, come on. I'm going to get Ava up here in the middle too. Y'all come on up. I used to pay a high dollar for front row seats back in the day. Didn't you when you went to the, t- the concerts that you went to? Oh, we got people that never been to a worldly concert before? Oh, got some liars in the church. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know about you, but I, I just, I like being real. Not real carnal. Let me just clarify that. Not real worldly. I just like being real, being transparent about how much I love God and how much God loves me. You start talking about that, man, and it will jack you up. Because here's the one thing that I never want to get over. It's, 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 it's sometimes harder or, e- or maybe not as easy to get over someone doing you wrong and stuff like that, and we're, we're told to get over that stuff. And, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's unfortunately been easy for people to, to get over, you know, you know, the relationship with their spouse, like, oh, I'm over it. Well, you need to get back on it, you know, or something. But uh, there's one thing I don't ever want to get over, and I don't ever want to get over what Jesus did for me. Because I was one jacked up individual, uh, and so I never want to lose that passion. I never want to lose that uh, thankfulness, and there's been a time or two when I felt like I almost did. We know that his mercies are new every morning, but whether or not we choose to walk in it, that's on us. Amen. I'm finding out more and more that, you know, he's wanting us to come to him because he has so many things available to us and for us. Right? Well, um, <clears throat> it's hard to believe that we are coming into September in a week. In a week, which uh, according to Jewish culture, uh, that's the end of their year and the beginning of a new one. Um, and for us also, that is our ninth month out of 12. We're coming into the end of the year for, for America, which, you know, we look back at January. Does anybody remember January? Yeah. Yeah, we got excited. Anybody have any goals, any visions, vision board, anything like that? Did some things, right, right? Uh, and some of you guys have had some things knocked off of your vision board, like uh, accomplished. Praise God for that. Um, but in that... When we did this vision board thing, it was about imagination. God gives us his imagination. Because so many times we're thinking too low, we're living too low. And I'm not going to give you some Tony Robbins motivational speech this morning or anything like that. But I want to remind you that God's imagination is so much greater than ours. And those things that haven't maybe come to pass yet, it only takes faith for it to come through. And if you've ever, has anybody run track besides me? I was pretty fast for, for my short stature. I was pretty quick. Um, and we, we did the 880 relay. Um, and when you're running relays, you guys know in relays, you get the fast person, that anchor, right? Bring it up. Well, we're in the last part of the year. So it's time to pick it up. It's time to get back on track. So it doesn't matter if you've been off track. It doesn't matter if you never got on track or were on track. You can get on track right now, this morning, and step into what God has for you. Amen? It takes faith to imagine, and it's really kind of like I heard one minister call this. He, he called it visioneering, like vision and engineering kind of mixed together. Um, and, and that's good and all, but... I believe that there's something when you actually seek God first, he gives you his imagination. And his imagination is far greater than anything we could uh, do on our own. Amen? Um, You guys know, I think it was been, what is it now, nine months, Ava? Nine months since we've been in our house, something like that. Eight or nine months, you guys know, you guys helped us move and stuff like that too. Eight or nine months. Um, we've been in this new house, and we live what I call a rural area. With people that have been there, yeah, my mother-in-law, yes, definitely. I mean, there's, we have cows as neighbors. 
So I like it, though. I like it. I like being out there away from everybody else and everything. And there's a lot of benefit to that because I can just do what I want to do and relax and chill. But at the same time, there's some things that have been a challenge. One of them has been cell coverage. Because does anybody have a landline in their house still? Nobody. Okay, good. Yeah. We don't either. Everybody has what? Cell phones. Um, and where we are, depending on the coverage now, the, here's the thing. We have a, a certain carrier, starts with the V, ends with the N. Uh, <laughs> sounds a lot like season. But uh, um, we have them, and on their coverage map, we are in a strong coverage area, according to the map. But where we are in this area, I mean, I can be sitting in the room, not even moving, and then all of a sudden I get the <laughs> cut up talking. Like, can you repeat that, please? Like, you cut out on me. And, and a lot of times what we do in our relationship with God is we get close to him and we get in these good coverage areas, but then we get comfortable and we get into these places to where we go back and, and, and we get in these spotty areas and we don't hear his voice very clearly. And, and so what I have to do in my house is... Uh, Sam in the other room, I'll, I'll go over, we don't have it upstairs, uh, but I'll go into um, this one room and I'll go over to my office because my office has the Wi-Fi there. And so I have to get closer to the source of the supply. Because if I get closer to the source of the supply, I'm going to get a stronger signal. And, and I want to encourage you this morning, you can get close to the source this morning and get that strong signal and get the answers that you need for the things that you've been believing for, for questions that you may have had. God wants to fulfill it to you. He wants to restore. He wants to heal. He wants to equip. He wants to impart. But we have to get connected to the source. So I'm getting connected. And so, so I want to read to you some things that God put in my heart. Is that okay if I just share from my heart a little bit? I mean, I put some notes to it. I'm not going to stick to them, obviously, uh, just because I feel like he's wanting to do something a little different. So we're going to go with that. Amen. <clears throat> now, has anybody had bad cell phone coverage before? It stinks. It's frustrating. Because you know they're saying something, and if you're like me, sometimes they're like, ha, yeah, ha, 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 and they could be like, I want to kill you. And, you know, and I'm like, yeah, really, that's great, okay. But I'm not catching what they're saying, and so I'm just trying to play along. When, and, and we do that sometimes with God, is we just play along and pretend everything's good, but really we're not getting clear connection. And that's the most frustrating thing, is that when you're not clearly connected, but you know you're supposed to be, but you yet you've forgotten or don't know how to get there. And I know I'm talking kind of fast, um, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, pretty passionate about it. And I want to share something with you that God kind of spoke to me about um, yesterday, actually. Um, upon finishing my notes, I went outside, and I, and I great thing about being in that place that we live is that I can pray and do whatever I want, and there's not a whole lot of people around. And if they are, I just wave at them anyhow. Um, and so I was out, <clears throat> out back, walking around my backyard, walking around this area, and I had some worship on outside. I had it blaring really loud because I don't have neighbors on either side of me yet. So I figured in the backyard is a field. And so I'm worshiping and praising. And then I see these cars driving by. And, and I'm just waving. Them, hey, how you doing? I'm worshiping. Yeah. They're like, what's this guy doing? He's walking around with his hands up. Is somebody holding him up? Like, no, I'm just worshiping. Um, and during that time, God started speaking to me about some things that I know are for us and for this church. And so I want to share them with you this morning. And before we get into that, i got to give you some scripture on it first, okay? You good with that? So, you know, we've been talking, I guess, it's been about, <clears throat> about 12 weeks now, taking ground. God wants us to take ground. Your job as a Christian is to preach the good news, lay hands on the sick, and they recover, cast out demons. Wasn't that Jesus' kind of... Last charge to command orders to give us. And then he said, wait for the promise, which is the Holy Spirit. So we, we now, the Holy Spirit enables us, empowers us, fills us to do the very works that Jesus did. Right? <clears throat> she said, amen. Yes. I'll take it any way I can get it. Amen. And so I wanted to, to share with you this 
We're in the book of Ephesians. It's been about 12 weeks, and we made it all the way to chapter 2. So we're doing pretty good. We might finish in 2025 or something like that. It's cool. I just want to know what, whatever comes hot off the press. I want whatever heaven has. I don't care about series and s- systems and structures and all that. I like that, but I want whatever God has for us. I want that fresh word. Amen. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. We are going to read this because it ties in completely with it. And then we're going to go somewhere. I don't know if you can read that or not. <clears throat> so I want to read it to you from um, my Bible, my laptop. I'll read out of the New Living Translation. And this is Paul talking to the church, church of Ephesus. You know, they were, you know, doing all these things right. In fact, in Revelations, he goes, hey, you've done all these things right, but this one thing that I have a charge against you, you left your first love. It's always coming about coming back to your first love. He was talking to the church of Ephesus in that. So Ephesians 2, it says, in those days, verse 12, in those days you were living apart from Christ. You were living apart from the anointed one and his anointing. That stinks. Have you guys ever, you know, do you remember before you got saved or before you got filled with the Holy Ghost? I mean, you were born again or, you know, let's go back before you were born again. Or maybe you were on a wilderness journey. You were born again, but you were out doing your thing. That's, I'll just talk about myself because that's been me multiple times, unfortunately. I'm not proud of it at all. But I remember being out there trying to do my thing and uh, thinking I was happy when I was miserable. Because I was operating outside of the anointing. Operating outside of the anointing is the worst feeling in the world. Here's what's so crazy. The anointing is not for Sunday. The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God for your life. Not for your Sunday service. Not for the, well, you know, that's great. I love that. I will shout. I'll take my shoe up and throw it at you with the best of them. But that's not going to change me out there. It's the anointing. I just feel God on it every time I say it. God is longing to remove burdens off of you. He's longing. Like the Holy Spirit brooded over the earth in Genesis 1. That means he was upset, waiting to bring order to the chaos. And by the command, by the word, the spoken word of God... It was able, he was always able to go in and, and to do things. And so it's the same type of thing. The Holy Spirit is brooding, longing, waiting to release the anointing in your life, at your work, at your home, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your finances, in your dark places. I'm just talking about myself. I'm not talking about you. But you all know that we all have those places, those hidden things, those hidden attitudes, those secret things we don't think anybody knows. Well, guess who's with us in those times? Holy Spirit. It wrecks me, man. It wrecks me. In a good way. And so when you when you get that... <laughs> when you get that refreshing, that's what the anointing does. It refreshes. It cleanses. And when you get that refreshing and you get that cleansing, who, who in here has a, a, a car? Okay, okay. Who in here has a dirty car right now? Kind of, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like cleaning it, though, don't you? Because they're like, ooh, it looks good. 
and you kind of avoid the puddles. You park on the back part of uh, Walmart, if it's a new car especially, right, or new to you, right? My daughter, she just uh, got a car, and the other day, she was like, oh, Dad, there's a white mark on my car. I was like, yeah, it happens when you park too close to somebody. She's like, well, I couldn't park it. There was too far away. I go, I get it, I get it. I said, we'll somehow get it out. We'll figure a way to get that, that, that ding or that scratch off. Why is that? When it's fresh and it's clean, you want to protect that thing, right? But something happens as we continue on. You know, you might have your car a year, a couple months, whatever. Now you park it. You're looking for that close parking spot, right? Yeah, we call it favor when the car's not so new anymore. When your car was brand new, you were like, uh-uh, I ain't parking up there. Not unless I get a fake handicap sticker. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But there's something about it. We call it the favor spot because we, we want to get up closer because now the thing that was once valuable to us is not as valuable. We have become familiar. You know, familiar familiarity, that's the, the number one killer of the anointing. And it has to do with becoming common or normal then. And I'm telling you, once you get that fresh anointing on you, man, you want to protect it. And I haven't been perfect at it, but I've been doing my best. Now, have I gotten in fights with my wife in the past uh, seven weeks? Absolutely. Not like knockdown dragouts, but, you know, you know, she might win, so I don't do that. Um, but have, have we gotten disagreements that were, you know, uh, loud? Yeah. It's funny, Dominique uh, got me a shirt when I was out of town. Um, it, it's too small, so I can't wear it. You know? <laughs> so I'll cut it off and make it a sleeveless shirt so I can wear it. But it says, I'm not loud. I'm Italian. Is that, wasn't that right? Yes. Yeah. And it's just, I, I don't have a, I, my, <laughs> I can't whisper for nothing. Like, uh, I cannot tell secrets because it's too loud. Uh, and there's something about that, I believe, that when you start getting excited about things, you can't help but be loud about it. You can't help but share. And, and, and you always want to, to tell someone about that thing that's happening in your life. And, and so, yes, we, we have been in arguments, but I've been so um, intentional on being quick to repent, quick to apologize, quick to stay in this secret place of that anointing tour. It just continues to flow. <clears throat> so um, we're walking in <clears throat> his fullness, and we're, it's like butter, right? Okay. So in these, <laughs> wow, we made it to the first whole sentence. That's great. Uh, in those days, you were living apart from Christ, which we don't ever want to do. You were excluded from citizenship. Now, this jumped off at me this morning, actually. The word citizenship, you know, I'm a citizen. We say we're citizens of heaven, and it's a cool Christianese thing to say, right? We even sing old gospel songs about it. But I want you to hear what this literally means. And So citizen to me, before I even looked it up, it meant, you know, rights and privileges provided from where you reside. So, so we're not going to get into politics this morning, but... People that walk in through a southern border from one nation into another nation does not make them a citizen. They used to be called an illegal alien or immigrant, either one, not a citizen. There was a certain thing that you had to go through to become a citizen of the United States. But once you did become a citizen of the United States, guess what? Now you had certain privileges, you had certain rights, you had certain entitlements that were a part of you. And here's what God uh, is saying through the Holy Spirit, by the way, of Paul writing to the church of encounter in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. <laughs> you were excluded from your rights and privileges provided from where you resided. But here it is. Webster's 1828 says this, a citizen is this, the native of a city or inhabitant 
who enjoys the freedom and privileges of the city in which he resides. We're all part of the kingdom, guys. So there are privileges, there are freedoms in where we reside, the kingdom of heaven. That means healing should be yours. Provision should be yours. Restoration. Healing from emotional crap. Old scars. Old rejections. Man, I can't tell you how much I'm finding out that God's still healing me. (laughs) I'm not going to cry about it. Like I don't even realize that I'm jacked up until I realize I'm jacked up. Right? Like, oh, I thought I was good. Oh, you are good, but there's still some things there that I want to peel out. And here's the cool thing uh, about God is he don't just rip it all off at once. Like, we like to just, who's a rip the Band-Aid off? That's me. I'm a rip it off. Now, my wife, she's like, can you please kind of like put some water on it and slowly peel it? Can you maybe put some olive oil on there to kind of get so the stickiness doesn't hurt? Right? And I get that. I get that, but here's, God's more like my wife, thank the Lord. Because what he'll do is he'll take your heart, and your heart is like an onion. And there's layers to it that have happened over the years. And there's some dry layers that are pretty obvious, and they fall off pretty quickly. But then you know the layer I'm talking about, the one that's been in the fridge for about a week. It's still cold, but it's not dry yet. But it sure isn't edible. It's like, ugh, it's kind of rubbery. and You know, when you chew on that one, you're like, yuck. Well, God, what he does is he slowly cuts the edge of that and peels it off to get to the fresh stuff. And so what God's wanting to do, what he's begging for you is like, I have these fresh things for you as a citizen of heaven. But you have to let me peel those layers off. I was torn about what to title this message, and I I was going to call it abiding in him, I was going to call it knowing him, I was going to call it imagine him, and then the Lord told me at the last second, I feel that this is the right thing, he's like, it's the narrow path, and we're going to get there about that scripture, because it says that wide is the path that people go on, it's easy, but the narrow path is the one that you got to allow him to peel those layers off. (laughs) <laughs> you gotta, you got to allow him to, to get into those places that aren't necessarily that comfortable. But here's the thing. You're a citizen of heaven, and you're walking around not knowing what's available to you. Yeah. I was sharing with the worship team this morning. I said, every one of you is superhuman. Did you know that? You're superhuman, superhuman, superhuman. All of y'all, just say it with me. Say, I'm superhuman. And I'm not talking about like Spider-Man kind of stuff, like you got bit by something. I'm talking about like you were born superhuman. Like you have the very nature, the DNA of God on the inside of you. You have his ruah, his breath. And when you accept Jesus into your heart, now you really, you just got connected. And now you're not living on Krypton anymore. You're here on earth with some superpowers. Because Krypton, heaven is your home, but you're residing here and can operate in the supernatural. But the problem is, and this is why I have this here, we walk around and see this is a lifesaver, you know, save your life and your breath. I, I tell people all the time, I said, no matter how anointed you are, if you got, you know, dragon breath, people ain't going to receive nothing from you. So make sure you wear your breath mint. But. Put this in my pocket. Y'all can't see it. I'm walking around superhuman, but we'll call this lifesaver kryptonite. Can Superman do anything supernatural when kryptonite's in his pocket? No. Why not? Because that's the one thing that makes him normal, that makes him human. And what we're doing is we're asking God, we're, we're begging God, we're praying to God, Lord, do this. Lord, help me with that. But don't take my kryptonite out of my pocket. Because you got to do it this way, God. That's kryptonite. God, I know I'm supposed to do this. or God, you said in the word that you would do that. Um, but you have unforgiveness in your heart.
oh, but you're still holding on to those old secret sins. You don't really believe it. Or, how about this one? You can quote it, but it hasn't become a part of you. Can I just flow for a second? Okay. Let me read the scripture, and then we'll get into what I want to say. Because <clears throat> this has to tie, it ties into everything. Listen to this. You were, exclu- you were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promise. Kryptonite. We've got an Eastern book, but we're living with a Western mindset. See, when, when Jewish people hear a command word, a word from the Lord, they just go and do it. Because they know and they believe and understand that the moment the word is given, power is enabled. Not, will it fit in my agenda? Not, uh, show me a sign first? No. The moment he gives the word, there's an empowerment to do that. So they didn't know the covenant promises. And so you lived in this world without God and without hope, but now have been united with Jesus Christ. Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. It's so good. Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. That jacks racism all up, doesn't it? That's what I love about it. I'm expecting this house to be fuller and fuller with every ethnicity in here. We should be a big melting pot. That's why I'm so thankful for God when I grew up in Memphis. I grew up in the middle of Midtown Memphis. I grew up one street over from the hood and three streets over from the bougies. And I was like right there in the middle. And so my best friend was Carlos Clark, this black dude. I could say black here. It's okay. Um, Because that's how, you know. And then this other dude, uh, Vu Tron, who was Vietnamese. And then Carlos Dionisio, who was Spanish, literally from Spain. And so I had all these people from all these different walks of life. And I was like, that's all I know. It wasn't nothing for me to go to Carlos's house and, and, and chop it up. And then to go over to Vu's house and have some Vietnamese food. And then, you know, we would all play together, do everything. We were all friends. But for some reason, we get in this, you know, weird system of, oh, this is that and that. It's all a, a ploy from the enemy Because the enemy can only do three things. The devil can only do three things. Deceive, find this in Genesis, divide, and distract. He deceived Eve. He divided Adam and Eve. Where was Adam? He was over there, but he wasn't right next to her. He wasn't shutting it down. And they got distracted by looking at the fruit. So we're not going to fall to those ploys. We're not going to fall to those things. Amen? We're going to look just like heaven, right? We're going to look just like heaven, right? Okay, thank you. Good, good, good. And so check this out. Here's what he did. One people on the cross broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Gentiles and the Jews from the two groups together as one body. Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. There's your answer right there. Pretty simple. If any Christian says anything otherwise, they're not a Christian. They may be a Bible believer, but a Christian means a Christ follower, one who looks and acts as Jesus did. That was for free. Verse 18 says, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Now, <clears throat> Miss Yvette, she brought a word last week. And it was awesome. And the devil did everything he could to try to shut that thing down. I was mad. I was upset. 
because I didn't get to really listen to all of it because uh, of some stupid uh, things that had happened online and things like that. I'm trying to fix all this stuff. But one of the things she said in particular, and Pastor Dana uh, brought back to the table on Wednesday, is God's calendar is kind of the calendar that we follow. And we're in the month of Elul right now. Now, the month of Elul, you're like, what does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do. And here's what it has as a Jewish culture. They tell you um, that if you follow God's calendar, you can expect to get God's results. Does anybody besides me want God's results? I, I do. I want to be like a Jewish person. I want, I'm engrafted in, so I might as well start operating like it. Remember, like, oh, man, that guy's a Jew. Do you guys remember that? Like he'll wheel and deal and whittle you down. No, but he's also prosperous and blessed because God's hands on him. We're not cheap. We're blessed. So listen to this. The month of Elul, I just want to share a few things as we get into this. <clears throat> God wants to meet with us in a special way this month. Isn't it interesting that the past seven weeks God's been talking to us about knowing him, about coming closer. He's been preparing us for this month. For the, what is it, the eighth or ninth of Elul right now? It's, it's, we're just into it. We're like just a week in. Actually, if it's the eighth, that means it's a new beginning. Boom. Uh, and so check this out. The month of Elul is God wants to meet us in a special way and share a time of intimacy with him. And it says that the month of Elul is a haven time. It's like a city of refuge from the ravages of life. How good is that? I like refuge. And one of the things that she had shared and Pastor Dana had shared is this. God wants you to know the king is in the field, which means this. He's not up some high and lofty place. He's down amongst us and with us, not only just to hear our voice, but he wants us to, to hear his and respond to him, and he responds to us. And so really we want to be running to him, coming to him, and... um. As I was praying about all this, and how do, I, how do you want to share this, Lord? How do you want me to say this? Um, it, it was crazy. I was yesterday, you know, talking to Dana about it, and then Ava was in the room, and, and I started getting on this little thing, and Ava was like, preach, that's a good word. And I, like, because, I mean, it started coming out of me. <laughs> so, so you can say it again, Ava, if you want to. <laughs> um, one of the things about this that the Lord was showing me is this. He's in the field, and what we think is we think that, that everything's good because we got our house, we got our two cars and our two car payments, in Jesus' name, no, <laughs> and we got our insurance, and we got our bills, and we got this, that, and the other, and so we think that everything is good, and we'll hear God's voice, and we're like, he may speak something to us, and, and it's kind of muffled, but we know it's his voice, and we can sense his presence, and we're like, oh, I'm, I must be good, Right? Well, here's what the Lord was showing me, uh, is that we're really in prison. You think you're free. And I'm going to give you this, this picture, this example. Now, uh, fortunately, I have not been to prison, uh, but I was arrested back in the day for doing stupid stuff. And uh, God, God expunged it all. I mean, like, I don't, I didn't, like, note the, anyhow. Praise the Lord. That was old Paul Cooper. That was old PC. This is new PC. And once again, that was like 35 years ago. So I was only like five years old. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But but here's the thing that I want I want to get to you. <clears throat> he showed me that we're in prison of sorts because of this. We think if we can hear his voice that we're good. But he's been talking to us, and he's been asking us to let go of some things, to put down some things, to stop doing certain things, but also to pick up some things and to draw closer. Like he started getting on to me about shows that I watch. And I was like, God, that's my only escape. I don't drink anymore. I don't do drugs anymore. You know, like, you know, all these things I'm laying out, I'm, I'm trying to plead my case to God. And he's like, hey, you know, and I'm like, I even watch VidAngel. Like it bleeps the words out. And he's like, no, I don't want you to, to, to do that anymore. I'm like, well, <sighs> but it wasn't that he was asking me not to do something. 
He was seeing if I was willing to. And here's what it was. Uh, when I became willing to, then he said, okay, now I want you to do this with me. And so then now I'm spending time with him more, and my time isn't wasted, and now I'm getting fuller. Instead of watching a 45-minute show that pisses me off, I'm actually coming out better, not angry, actually compassionate about stuff. And the prison part is this. You know, you watch shows, and you see people, they got that orange outfit on or that beige one, whatever, you know, whatever correctional facility they're from, you know. And they got those rubber shoes. And, and, and so they don't have any chains on, right? No chains. They walk up into the room. And here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So they, they I'm going to play this whole scene out for you because I'm dramatic. <laughs> so here it is. You're in prison here. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm real cool. Got it all figured out. Hello? Oh, yeah. What's up, God? Big bulletproof glass wall right in between us. Wires in there. He's on the other side, the free side. He's like, oh, oh. Yeah, what's up, God? And he's like, how you doing? Oh, blessed and highly favored. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was reading in your word the other day, if I seek you for, and, you know, we start talking all this scripture. But the whole time he's on this side, we're on this side, thinking we're free because there's no shackles, but we're living in a prison. Why is that? Well, we want to put God in a box. God, if you do it this way, I'll know it's you. When the whole time he said, hey, I need, I need you to, to, to let go. I need you to trust me. I need you to truly encounter me, to, to experience me. Because, see, what we're doing is, is we have this knowledge. Now, the word says that the letter alone kills, right? But it's the spirit that gives life. And what we're doing is we're in prison because we're not getting rid of the kryptonite. And I'm not saying any of this to be negative, guys, by the way. This is the most awesome, most exciting thing for you. All you have to do is just pitch it. There it goes. Not in my pocket anymore. Guess what? Now I'm superhuman. It's that easy. And then you don't have to go walking around on things because, see, I believe that, that we have a people in here that are passionate about pursuing him. I believe that you got up this morning and came into this place because you weren't complacent, but you were hungry for more of him. And because you were hungry more, he says, oh, check this out. I'm about to fill it up, pour it out. He's going to pour it out on you. Yeah, I poured it out on there. And he wants to continue to just keep pouring, keep pouring. As much as you can handle, he'll keep on pouring. But how much of him do you want? I want it all. I, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm an addict. I'm addicted to Jesus. I can't, I can't get enough. I feel like a crackhead right now. I was like, <laughs> I literally can't get enough of him. So I, 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 I'm wrestling. I wrestle every week because I want it to be a fresh word from him. I do not want it a word from Paul Cooper because Paul Cooper's not smart enough to give you a good word. And so I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? He goes, look, I want you to get outside, and I just want you to worship. You know, I'm thinking I need to read the word some more. I need to go over my notes some more. And he goes, no, just put some worship on and go pray in the spirit. And so we have this pool um, in our backyard. And I'm, I'm walking out of the pool, and I've got that Bose sound system just blaring as loud as I can. And I'm just walking around, hands up, hands up, praising the Lord, praying in tongues, worshiping, praying. And, and uh, <clears throat> I had on like my, 
uh, muscle shirt and some, some swim trunks because I was going to swim earlier that day, but I never did. And I'm just walking around, worshiping, praising, and he goes, step in to the pool. And then the shallow end, we have a step, and then we have this one long step, the width of the pool. And so I step down into that step, and I'm walking back and forth, and I'm like, oh, you're so good. And this water feels amazing. Thank you for this water on this 100-degree day, God. This is awesome. And I'm just going back and forth, walking in this calf or ankle-deep water, however you want to call it. And as I was worshiping, I felt like him say, go deeper. And I'm not trying to say that this is all Ezekiel 37 kind of thing, but it kind of was at the same time. Because so I stepped down lower, and then as I stepped down lower, you could tell that I'm not the tallest person in the world. And so right here were my shorts, and they got wet as I stepped down into the second step. And I'm walking back and forth. I was like, man, I'm committed now. My shorts are wet. There's no going back. I'm going to have to get a towel to go inside. It's going to take a minute to get these things off. And I'm worshiping and praising. And as I'm worshiping and praising, uh, he goes, step in deeper. So then I get down deep, and it's up here in the waist. But here's the thing. Right before I stepped down into that lower place, I had to take some things off. If you want to go deeper with him and you want to get closer with him, there's some things that you got to throw off. There's some things that you got to take off. So I, I took off the shirt, and, and, and as I got deeper, I started worshiping. I started going back and forth across the pool, and, man, the presence of God hit me. I just started bawling my face off because <clears throat> uh, his presence is so good. And that's why I'm kind of like the way I am right now. It's because I just want more of him. And as I was, you know, and the sun was starting to go down, it was getting dusk, and I'm just worshiping, and I'm praising, and I'm thanking him. You know, I'm not thanking him for the natural, so like, oh, thank you for my house, thank you for this pool. No, I'm just like, thank you, God. That's it. Thank you, God. I thank you I got breath in my body. I thank you that you love me, that you saved me from my stupidness. Thank you, God. And I'm just worshiping, and I'm praising He's like, go deeper. I'm like, yes, let's go deeper. Let's drown. No. <laughs> let's drown in your glory. No. But as I'm sitting there going deeper, and I get into this place where it's like right at my chest. We have like a seven-foot deep pool. And, uh, and I'm right at this chest area, and I'm just kind of worshiping and, and kind of standing around and worshiping and praying. And he's like, wait. I'm like, for what? I'm just swimming. Like, can't we do the rest of Ezekiel? Can't I go on this over my head? You know, you know the whole scripture because you already got it figured out. Isn't that what we do? Like if I say Matthew six thirty three, seek first the kingdom of God and see, we know the scripture. And so I'm, he goes, just wait. And it's so important that we listen to his voice and are quick to obey. And as I was sitting there and waiting, he's like, you want to go deeper? I go, yes, I want to go deeper. I'm waiting on you to let me go deeper. And he goes, okay, go. And it wasn't a conversation necessarily just like that. I just had a prompting on my heart, like, okay, now start, start treading water out there. Start getting out into the place that's over your head. And, and what's so cool, we have these four Taylor junipers at our deep end, you know. They're these Christmas-looking, Greek-looking trees, you know, little Italian-looking Christmas trees. They're real narrow. They're at the end. And we have these little solar panel lights over there. And the moment that I see, the moment, the moment that I began to step out into the deep and began to swim, the lights came on. And I know that's not a big deal to you. But it spoke to my heart that the moment that we will step out, the moment that we will get into those deep places, those intimate places with him that can only come from spending time in his presence, that can only come from spending time in his word and, and praying, that, that the lights, revelation is going to come on you. You're going to start getting answers about things that you never knew about. You're going to get answers about questions you had when you were a kid. And light's going to come on to cause restoration in your life. Those things you didn't even know that, that, that you were heard about. 
He'll show you and he'll say, forgive them. When we were on vacation, I had this dream. And I knew it was a God dream. Because when I woke up, the Lord told me, forgive your wife. I'm like, get behind me, Satan. Because that's the one thing that you want to hold on to, right? Not, oh, nobody in here wants to. <laughs> like, you know, you remember the time, right? And we hold on to those things because that's where we have power or control. But it, what he was saying is that I need to forgive her. Not go tell her that you forgive her, but forgive her. See, we like to manipulate things. Hey, I just want to tell you, the Lord came and spoke to me. It's such a beautiful moment. I literally had someone do that to me 20 years ago, back in Memphis. Like, yeah, the Lord just told me that I need to come and forgive you. I'm like, why are you telling me? So you'll feel better about yourself and feel like you have some control and manipulation over me. But the Lord told me, he goes, forgive her. And I'm like, but for what? He's like, I didn't say for what. I said, forgive her. And so I said, yes, sir. And the moment that I did, I didn't even know what I was forgiving her for. I said, Lord, I forgive. I release her. And he, he also told me to forgive some other family members in my life. And the moment I did, man, he just started unloading things and opening things up in my life. See, the thing is, is we don't realize we're walking around with kryptonite in prison. But the gate's wide open. It's like the border. And you're an antelope. If you don't get that, it's, do they open the gates so the antelopes can come through? Okay. Anyhow, I thought it wouldn't go political. <clears throat> but here's what's so good about it. It's so good. His presence is so good. It's like a stuffed jalapeno wrapped in bacon. You know what I'm talking about? With the seeds in, the heat. You got to have a little heat with it. But the, what I want to get to you is that God's got so much more for you, but you've got to come to him. You've got to throw off that old forget, unforgiveness and your own agenda and your own plan because he has something that he wants to do for you. And so <clears throat> I, want to, I want to share this with you. We're, we're going to close out um, in, in just a second. And I want to make an opportunity for you. <clears throat> Matthew 7, this is the narrow gate, verse 13 and 14. I'll read out the Amplified. It says, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad and easy is the travel, is the path that leads to the way of destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. A lot of people are going the easy way. But small and narrow is the gate, and difficult to travel is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. And there's few who find it. Man, that used to bother me. There's only few that find it. Does that mean we're not going to go to heaven? No, it doesn't, doesn't mean that at all. Because if you read the entirety of the verse and you don't take the scripture out of context, you don't get conned by the text. And so previously, it, it says some things about forgiveness. It says some things about not trying to manipulate, not trying to control. The message translation says it like this. Look at this. Don't look for shortcuts to God. Don't we love Cliff Notes? I love Cliff Notes. That was like my go-to in college. Like, you got Cliff Notes on that? You know, get, give me the quick answer. Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life. That can be practiced in your spare time. What? The market is flooded with surefire, easy and go on formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do. Don't fall for it even though everyone else does. The way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. That's all he's asking for you because here's the thing. Look at the previous verse so we don't take it out of context. Verse 12. Here's a simple rule of thumb. A guide for your behavior. This is countercultural, by the way. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Can you think about something you want somebody to do for you right now? Man, it sure would be nice if I had this or 
someone could do that for me. Or It's funny, like my wife and I will be sitting over there in the couch, and I'll be coming to them. She's already sitting down watching TV or something like that. She's like, babe, can you get me so-and-so? I'm like, oh, I just sat down. You may besides me even that way, don't. You don't, yeah, nobody's raising their hand because their spouse is in beside them. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's selfish of me, not of her. Because check this out. Here, here's where God gets you. <laughs> here's the simple rule of thumb. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. That's where we're like, that's a devil. They, they, well, but then they're going to manipulate me and control. And but No. When you're doing it out of the place of love, when you're doing it from God's agenda, it says this, add up God's law and prophets, and this is what you get. Very next verse. Don't make shortcuts for God. You want to you walk in the fullness of life? Figure out what you want and do that for somebody else. See, the broad path is the easy path, but the narrow path takes faith. And that's what he wants for us. He wants us to, to end our walk stronger than the when we started it. I mean, there's so many people I know of that, you know, have kind of just walked away from the faith or like they were fired up, they were traveling itinerants or whatever, and now they're CEOs and businessmen. And that's fine. That's great. But I want my walk with him closer at the end than it was at the beginning. There's a song from uh, this dude. It's called Falling in Love with Jesus. Do you, do you remember who sings it? Not Kurt Carr, but he, no. What? You just, Aaron Linder sang it. He was, <laughs> but it's, uh, I don't know, this dude. Anyhow, saxophone player. But he says, Falling in Love with Jesus there's no place I'd rather be. I think that's what we need to be doing all the time, is falling in love with Jesus again and again and again. And the only way you can do that is by spending time with the, with the Word. Jesus is the Word. He was the Word made flesh. And I didn't come here to blend in. I even made a t-shirt so I wouldn't blend in. I don't want, you know, yeah, we, we got the t-shirt, Wow. We made it. No. We need to stand out. I want to where you walk into a room that, man, the anointing just comes on you and you start laying hands on people in Walmart and they get healed. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching good. See, we would love, we love those prophetic moments where like, oh, someone gave me a word about so-and-so and what they're doing wrong. Right? That's probably a familiar spirit. It's probably not the spirit of God because God's not going to share people's dirty laundry with you. He talks to them first. And then he goes to their pastor or someone else that's going to cover them and protect them to get them back into his good graces. See, my thing for everyone here, and I know I'm, I'm repeating this over and over, but it needs to be repeated, is we don't need to go by just the word. The word alone, you'll dry up. In the spirit alone, you'll blow out. You'll like just flake up. But when you get the word and the spirit together, you're going to blow up and grow up. Yeah. And here's the thing is we've fallen, to, we've fallen privy to this thing about knowledge. This is, it's an American thing. I don't understand why. I, I've fallen to it many a times. And it's this, well, I need to learn more about that. Before I take the first step, I need to understand everything. My, my daughter and I, when I when we get, like, my wife, and when I get something new that we have to assemble and put together, that my daughters and my wife, they're like, Dad, did you read the instructions? I'm like, well, what's that for? I don't need instructions. Just put it together. They're supposed to give you extra parts. Not really. You just put it together wrong. But see, the thing is, is we want to learn first so then we can understand, and then if we understand then we'll not do, but we'll accept it. God's saying, hey, I'm asking you, so accept that. This final authority, then step out and do it immediately. 
then you'll start understanding why I've asked you to step out and start doing these things. So, so the knowledge is good, but without experience, it's not helpful. Like right now, if I said, hey, uh, I want you to have an orange. I want to tell you about an orange. And, you know, an orange is orange in color. It's got this rough kind of peel on it, but you can peel it off. If you bite into it, it's kind of bitter on the, on the peel. But then once you peel it off, it's juicy, it's sweet, it's citrusy. And then it, it, and when you bite into it, it kind of, you know, gets all over the place sometimes, depending on how full it is in season. But until you eat that orange for yourself, it's nothing more than knowledge. And so we need to get into the word, but then we need to encounter the word. We need to spend time in his presence. Amen? The worship team, go ahead and come up here. I'm going to close. <clears throat> Got one more time to close. See, there's people that get confused and they don't understand why they're not walking in all that God has for them. But you have to get out of the prison. You have to let go of those things. You have to throw those old things off. Because I don't want to hear God through a telephone in a wall, in a glass. Jesus came to remove all that for us. Amen? You know, the Bible says that Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, that's not talking about tithing. It's not talking about more good than bad. You guys can go and start playing whatever you want. It's fine. What it's talking about is having a relationship with him. He redeemed us from these man-made rules and regulations, so now we can have relationship with him again. Amen? And so the whole reason that Jesus came was to restore what the devil had stolen from us, right? And so the Holy Spirit, he wants to give us all the answers. In fact, the Amplified says that he, yeah, we well, could turn that down a little somewhere. Turn it down there. Thank you. Awesome. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit all those things to you, all those questions you may have, all those worries, all those cares. He wants to show you His way, which is so much easier. It's so much better, but you've got to give over to Him. Amen? Matthew 6, the last scripture is this. This is red letters, by the way. This is Jesus talking. He says, seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom. God's way of doing things. His righteousness. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. So the Passion Translation says it like this. Above all, constantly seek God's kingdom. Now the word in Hebrew for above all is the kingdom realm of God. Seek the kingdom realm of God and his righteousness and all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. In abundance. And the message says this, steep your life in God reality. Listen to that. Hear this. Steep your life in God reality. My wife likes tea. She likes to watch these British shows, and she goes and gets this whole tea set out, and she gets this little ball, silver ball with mesh, and she puts the tea in and closes it, and she steeps it. Why, why does she do that? Because, you know, it's literally hot water with all, and then you have all these herbs and things inside of this ball. And as you submerge it into the hot water, the water now changes. The water becomes diffused. It's no longer flavorless water. Now it has a flavor. Now it has an aroma. Now it has uh, caffeine, praise the Lord. Uh, and it has a substance to it. And what it's saying here is 
steep your life. You may be in hot water, but you get God in your life, and when you're in the hot water, now it's going to be a different flavor. It's going to be a different aroma. It's going to be a different scent. It's going to be a different flavor in your life. But you've got to really give into God's reality, God's initiative, God's provisions. And it goes on to say this, don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. And so as I was walking back and forth in the pool and as I uh, continued to go deeper and deeper, I felt like the Lord was saying to us this morning, He wants to go deeper with you. He wants you to, to go deeper with Him. He wants you to throw those things off. He wants you to let go of those things that are keeping you powerless. He wants you to get out of the prison and to come into His freedom and His fullness. Amen. So why don't you stand with me, and Gracie, if you're back there, if you can uh, get it to the worship lights for me. Thank you. I just wanted to make the atmosphere agreeable or easy for you to just respond to him. I can't see even if you raised your hand right now. <laughs> but I believe in this moment it's a time that we need to just lay those things down at God's feet. Just to let go. So I want you to pray with me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Father God, I repent. I let go of my plan my agenda, my way of doing things. Forgive me from anything that would separate me from you. I know your love is never separated, but my sin will keep me away. And so forgive me. I repent of any sin in my life. I let it go never to pick it up again. Old ways of thinking, old ways of doing, old ways of living, I let it go. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I thank you for a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. And right now, I receive Let's just raise our hands right now. I receive healing, wholeness, restoration, healing in my body, wholeness in my mind, restoration in my soul of what the enemy's stolen. Right now, I receive it in Jesus' name. I'm never going to be the same. I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. New things, new ways, new levels, new anointings in my life.